Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. A couple of days left now until the transfer window closes. And uh, you may have seen on one of our other videos that we had out this morning, breaking news that Stan Kroenke is going to be taking over Arsenal Football Club. Um, Alicia Uzmanov has agreed to sell him his shares. Um, other shareholders who own about 3% will have to sell theirs as well. And that means that Kroenke will own 100% of Arsenal. Now, it's not going to be popular. Um, I've already been looking at the video I've done this morning and looking at the poll I did, whether people think it's good or bad. And so far, there's not much support for Stan Kroenke. One way in which he can get fans on side very quickly is to spend some money. And, um, you know, you would have seen in the video, as I spoke in that video, even the money to purchase those shares off of Usmanov, he's borrowing that money. It's not his money. He's borrowing that money, a bit like what Man United with the Glazers done to purchase those shares. But will he invest any money in buying any players at Arsenal? And certainly one of the things that could appease the fans would be if he could pull off the deal to get Usman Dembele. Now, we know that also not going to buy Usman Dembele outright. It just doesn't seem feasible that Arsenal would cough up the £100 million plus to buy the player from um, from Barcelona. Um, however, there's a lot of talk today that Arsenal may offer £8.9 million um, as a loan for the season, then with an option to buy Dembele for £89 million, um, at the start of next season. Now, Sounds great. It would be cheaper than the 130 or million that Barcelona paid for it on Dembele. Whether they'll go for this or not, we'll have to wait and see. There's been a lot in this Dembele thing. As I said the other day, Dembele's returned back to training early at Barcelona. The thought is that Dembele would like to stay at Barcelona. Listen, you're at you're one of the biggest clubs in the world. You're going to be playing Champions League football. You play with Messi, Suarez, etc., of course he wants to stay, but if he feels that he's not going to be getting regular football, then he would be up for a move to Arsenal Football Club. This is where Stan Kroenke, if he is to start winning over the fans, these are the sort of deals that he's got to try and pull off to show that he's ambitious about challenging for the Premier League. Because, let's face it, over the past 10 odd years that he's been in charge... We've not gone nowhere near winning the league. We've, it's, it seems like we've just gone backwards. So um, it's going to be very telling to see if he does make some sort of statement um, in this transfer window with a um, sort of big marquee signing. Now, another player that's said to be close to um, signing for Arsenal, if you listen to a lot of the rumours, is uh, Dimitrov Vida. Now, Vida plays for Besiktas. We've spoken about him many times on the show. Um, of course, he played for Croatia in the World Cup. Croatia got to the final. He played very, very well. Was a solid player. It kind of reminds me of, for you older fans out there, you look at his face. He looks like a Peter Reed with hair, right? If you know who Peter Reed is, if you're not younger fans, go and Google him. But Peter Reed, and listen, Peter Reed was a real hard man as well. And so is Vida. And um, said that Arsenal are willing to offer up to £25 million for him. Um, of course, he plays at the moment in Turkey for Besiktas. Vida's apparently come out and said that, listen, he wants Besiktas to make it easy for him to move. He, his dream is to move to the Premier League, and he wants Besiktas to make that possible. There are a couple other teams. I think Liverpool are one of the other teams that are looking at him. So Liverpool and Arsenal. But um, this could be one that could go right down to deadline day and for us to see what happens. Could as well the fact that David Ospina is wanted by Besiktas have some sort of bearing on this whole deal? Could Arsenal sort of uh, use the Ospina thing, you know, and, you know, the fact that Vida wants to come to Arsenal and sort of get the deal done? Could it fall into place in that way? Let's keep an eye on this one right up to deadline day. And it does seem very viable, this, especially when, you know, it's still that out there that Callum Chambers could be on the move to Fulham on a season-long loan. It starts to make sense. Um, of course, if you then have Vida, 
uh, you know, Vida and Socrates. That's two guys, 29 year olds, but a lot of experience in that back four. And it looks like uh, Unai Emery is looking for experience in, in that back four area. Um, but could Vida happen? We have to wait and see. And as I said, Callum Chambers is still in the pipeline. We're hearing that he could be on the move to uh, Fulham um, on a season-long loan. Again, I, I still find it a little bit strange because if me, if it was me personally, I think I'd be more looking to send Rob Holding out there because I think Rob Holding would more benefit from a loan. You know I mean, Chambers has already been out on loan before. Chambers, I think, is uh, is you know good enough to get into the first team as long as he has an experienced player next to him. Um, but let's see what happens with that one. Lucas Perez um, could be a West Ham player by the end of today. His agent sort of confirmed yesterday that West Ham are interested. West Ham have made no secret that they want Lucas Perez. Um, it was initially thought that he could be going to sport in Lisbon, but looks like uh, Perez wants to stay um, here. He says that uh, basically he wants to play football. Not sure if he'd be starting if he goes to West Ham because, you know, of course they've got Anatovic, um, Hernandez as well. But listen, um, he's wanted by them. He's not really wanted by Arsenal, which has been literally clear from the day he's come in. He's not really been treated very well, this guy, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, it looks like Lucas Perez is on the move. And, and actually, I'm going to do a poll on it. Do you think that Lucas Perez has treat, been treated badly by Arsenal, that he's never really had a chance? I really like to get your views on this one, but it looks, does look like Lucas Perez will be leaving Arsenal. It's also starting to look like uh, Danny Welbeck could be on the way out before the window. Of course, he's in the last year of his contract, and we're being told today that um, Unai Emery has told him that, listen, you can find a club, you can leave. And there's three clubs that are straight away really, really interested in Danny Welbeck. They're Bournemouth, Southampton, and also Everton, those three apparently are um, willing to take uh, Danny Welbeck. It's going to be down to Welbeck, though, whether he wants to move to those clubs or whether he wants to stick around at Arsenal um, and then maybe just see his contract out like what loads of people have done in the past. Why not? Just follow the trend. But it does look um, like Danny Welbeck could be on his way out before the deadline day. He's just returned back to training, by the way, at Arsenal, but he could be on the move as well. Now, we spoke yesterday about Ricardo Rodriguez, um, the left-back crisis at Arsenal. Monreal's not quite fit at the moment. Um, Kolasinac is out for 10 weeks. We don't have any other um, left-backs who can slot in there or anybody else who can kind of play that position correctly. Maitland-Niles can go in there and do a job, but he's not a left-back. Um, and there was a lot of talk that Arsenal put in a, um, a bid for £30 million to AC Milan for Ricardo Rodriguez. This apparently has been turned down by AC Milan. They said they're not willing to sell Rodriguez. They see him as a very important part of their team. Um, PSG as well apparently also uh, have tried to um, get Ricardo Rodriguez and that has been turned down as well. So it looks like AC Milan are set on holding on to their man and we will not get Ricardo Rodriguez. A guy actually we should have signed about two seasons ago when Arsene Wenger was in charge and he just divvied and divvied on it and we didn't get him. He ended up going to AC Milan. Um, Reese Nelson looks like he's going to get rewarded with a brand new long-term contract at Arsenal. He's been pretty good in pre-season, Reese Nelson. Um, this could be a breakout season for him. This could be a season where he gets more first-team football. Of course, Arsenal are on that look for a winger. You know, this could be his chance. This could be his big chance to sort of break in there with a couple of great games and uh, say to the manager, listen... You don't need to go out there and spend 50, 60 million pounds. I'm here. Um, but Reese Nelson's been offered a new long-term contract and uh, good luck to him. And uh, let's hope he can be another one of those players that emerged from our academy and makes it to the first team and stays in that first team. Right, let's get into a couple of your comments. Uh, the Notorious Midge says, um, is there any, if there is anything in this Boateng link, please let it happen. Would be a brilliant sign-in. And that's uh, Jerome Boateng of uh, Bayern Munich yesterday, I said that, you know, um, Arsenal be linked with a £45 million move for him. Um, Morgan Carl Davis says, forget Botang. Did no one watch him in the World Cup? He's passed it. Slapped down 40 to £50 million for Toby Alderweireld. Proven they need the money. They wouldn't need to move. He wouldn't need to move house. 
and he'd slot right in Sol Campbell part two. I think that's the reason why Tottenham would never sell us Toby Alderweireld because it would be a Sol Campbell part two and their fans wouldn't be up for that. I think the only way we could have got a Toby Alderweireld would be if his contract was running out completely, possibly then. But whilst uh, Tottenham can sell him to other clubs, they're not going to want to sell him to Arsenal. And uh, Suri here says, um, do a swap deal. Gazidis for Ricardo Rodriguez. <laughs> of course, Gazidis is on his uh, way. We all seem to know that this is inevitable to AC Milan. Um, he says, send Ricardo Rodriguez back in the other direction. Oh, that's, a, that's a good deal, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, thanks for watching the show today. Um, two more days after today to go to deadline day. What is going to happen? Will Vida come in? Could we get Botang? Could Dembele come in? Kronke, you're taking over the club? Do something for the fans.